Hey guys, this is Will and I'm here today to talk to you about the Grimspeed Boost Control Solenoid install for the O2 through O7 WRX and STI. We're going to start off by taking a look at what we actually get in the box when you get this in the mail. Now the first thing you're going to notice when you open this up is our greeting card. It says basically just thank you from us and a signature in the bottom left hand corner of who actually packaged this for you. Next up what you're going to see is of course our sticker and the boost control solenoid itself. Now there might be a couple extra grommets and screws in there but no worries it just depends on your fitment. And of course install instructions. Very good diagrams in there should help you out quite a bit. Now the tools you're going to need today are a flathead screwdriver, a 10 millimeter socket, pliers, scissors, about 60 inches of 5 30 seconds back line, and a couple zip ties just in case you can't find the hose clamps. Now to start off here we're going to look to the left hand side of the engine bay. There's a little cover here. Um, these clips are pretty easy to remove. Just put a little pressure on them and twist them 90 degrees. Uh, the cover will pop right off. This is going to expose where the OEM boost control solenoid is right there. Now to simply remove this, there's going to be a bolt on either side and of course the pressure clip. Simply remove the pressure clip to start and uh, locate the bolt on top and bottom. This is where your 10 millimeter socket's going to come into play. They're pretty easy to break loose, put a little pressure on them, break them, and uh, after that it's actually pretty easy to just hand loosen them. Not too bad. Now once those are loose, we're just going to remove the solenoid from the bracket on the wall. Now when you pull this out, you're going to notice there's going to be a vacuum line connected to the bottom and to the side. Just yank those things right off there. We're not going to be using those, um, but don't throw them away quite yet as you might need the connectors. Now there's the OEM solenoid. Say goodbye. Now with that removed, we're going to locate the lines on the other side, which is going to be on the wastegate of the turbo right there and on the compressor housing nipple right there. There's a little vac line that runs to each. As you can see right here, there's a T in the middle of it as well. And that's where it's connected. Now that's a shot from the back side. Now we're moving to the front here, and there's the compressor housing nipple. Now to remove these, it's pretty easy. You just remove the clamps, and you just kind of got to pull on it. Be careful not to break the compressor housing nipple, though, as that would be a very costly mistake. Now for the wastegate, I found it best to just use the screwdriver and uh, push gently against it. Try not to scratch or gouge the nipple on the wastegate either, although you will not be using that vac line again, so whatever means you need to get it off there. Now you're going to pull this out and you're going to see that there is a T right there that went to the wastegate and to the compressor housing. It's also going to have a line that's run up into your turbo inlet. Simply pull that out. doesn't require too much pressure. And now all of your lines are going to be disconnected and uh, just gently pull out the rest of that routing. Now we're going to go to the OEM boost control solenoid and we're actually going to remove the gold cups and rubber grommets that are installed on this as we're going to reuse them on our new boost control solenoid. Now if you have uh, an 06 through 07 WRX or any of the STIs, we're actually going to send you new grommets and bolts so you will not need to do this step. Once these are removed, we're simply going to put them back in to our boost control solenoid the same way. Now with that all back together, we're going to take our boost control solenoid and just slip it over the OEM bolts. Once that's on there, let's grab those nuts again and screw them back on there. You can just hand tighten them now before you run all the lines. That way you can make any last adjustments if needed. Now you're going to take the OEM clip and plug it into our BCS clip. It'll be a perfect fit. Now we're going to run about 20 inches of vac line down to the wastegate nipple. It can be a little tough, so a little bit of water might be needed to slip that on there, but it'll go on there. Once that's on there, you're going to loop that back over and route that back into the boost control solenoid location. 
There's the hose right there. Now we're going to connect this to the bottom port on the BCS when it's sitting in this position. As you can see right there. Now we're going to run about the same amount of line uh, up to the compressor housing nipple. It's about 20 inches. And you're going to route it back the same way as where the wastegate line is run. Um, just slip it under this tube and run it back over to your BCS. Now this is going to connect to the middle port on your BCS. Now for the last line, we're going to look down to the turbo inlet. Right there, we're going to reuse that connector. We're going to connect another about 20-inch section of vac line, and we're going to snap it into the OEM hose locations. Once again, route it underneath those hoses and follow the path of the other vac lines you just ran. This line is going to get connected to the top port on the BCS. That will be the final port that is open. Now that all the lines are run, just make sure that you re-tighten those bolts on either side of the BCS. Simply put the cover back on, push in the snap clips, and that's about the end of this project. Now you just got to go get a tune, and this thing should be ready to rock and roll.